Hello. My name is Yulia Ovchinnikova, and I will talk about the Russian domain space .ru, its evolution and how it addresses challenges such as creating and managing the first ever non-Latin international domain name, starting with Cyrillic. A few words about me. I'm a challenge queen and enthusiastic problem solver. Born and raised in the USSR, single mom of two, I relocated straight to the Hudson Valley, New York, five years ago to build the regional technology community. Observing differences and similarities between our countries, I realized the impact of technology on people's lives. My research shows the access to digital skills, devices, and broadband is crucial for the economic development, business development, workforce development. I was surprised to learn that the digital divide is real in such a developed country like the US. Collector and promoter of regional challenges and solutions, I found OpenHub to address these challenges where I choose to live, Hudson Valley, New York. Digital development is steadily growing worldwide by 10% per year. More than four and a half billion people now use the internet. That's nearly 60% of the world's population. They speak multiple languages. They represent many cultures. They use non-Latin alphabets. You can see the discrepancies between the percentage of content languages for existing websites versus percentage of internet users by language. 60% of internet users are non-English speakers, while the dominant language used of the internet is English. When we let people use their native languages, it fosters their user experience, addressing the digital divide. As you know, any DNS name consists of top level domain and domain name itself. Originally, the TLD space was organized into three main groups, countries, categories, and multi-organizations. Generic top-level domains, GTLD, are top-level domains with three or more characters. Country code top-level domains, CCTLD, are two-letter domains established for countries or territories. With some historical exceptions, the code for any territory is the same as its two-letter ISO code. You can see some countries are using their domain names for commercial purposes like .tv representing Tuvalu, .md is Moldova, .me Montenegro, and .my is Malaysia. So we plan to launch the Cyrillic domain name RF in 2009, and there were three more applications at the same time submitted, but we were first. So you can see some examples. I'm not saying those were the first applications, but just examples. Some of them are written from right to the left, Arabic ones. Uh, in 2011, the new GTLDs were unleashed. So you heard about XXX, Biz, Name, Bike, Canon, PlayStation, Singles, or maybe New York City. Donuts Inc. invested about 60 million in more than 300 applications while others applied for 60 plus domains. I bet there are examples and examples to tell stories. But let's talk about internationalized domain names. Those are domain names with characters other than ASCII characters. Some languages like Arabic are written from right to left. Ideas are a part of local culture and identity on the internet. Ideas' role is to represent language and cultural diversity on the web and network levels. 
support and improve accessibility for content for those who are sole users of a local language. Since 2009, countries with non-Latin-based scripts may apply for internationalized country code top-level domain names, which are displayed in end-user application in their language, native script, or alphabet, but they use a PANI code translated ASCII domain name in the DNS. Okay, why Cyrillic then? We said IDNs are part of local culture and identity on the internet. So local language keeps, helps to keep identity in the universal world. And we do have 250 million people speak Russian. And we know Russia specifically has a high literacy rate and huge cultural assets, but only 3% of the population speak English well, in large cities only. Only 20% can read and translate English with a dictionary. Native languages are easier to read, easier to understand, memorize domain names and use for navigation. They are important for trademarks protection and search engine optimization. We have only 20 letters in common with English out of 33. So you can try to spell borscht in English. And there is no adequate Latin script, Cyrillic script translation mechanism. Okay, why RF then? RF is number one brand suffix in Russia and it is the most common abbreviation for and in Russia. Premier Minister Pravel Savishania. One step beyond suffix to top level domain name. Cyrillic domains source of promotion of the geographic, historical, ethnic, cultural and language diversity. We have 13 Slavic countries using Cyrillic based alphabets. We wanted to help local small and medium sized businesses to go digital. We knew this would be the way to protect and support the Cyrillic trademarks and culture. At the same time, we knew hackers and all tech community use Latin for programming and they didn't see the value. General public didn't use the internet much at that time and didn't experience the need in domain names or websites. But you can see the difference right now. Okay, domain.ru is the Latin alphabet of CCTLD for the Russia since 1994. In 2002, we formed CCTLD.ru as a registry. And before that, we got through the monopolization process. So the domain price dropped from $100 per to 10. In 2008, domain, Russia initiated the first internationalized top-level domain name with Cyrillic. My first priority was to build government and community awareness about the internet. We introduced metrics of internet development in the country. And the most important metric is how many people use the internet. So you can see some interesting numbers. So when we started tracking internet users growth, we realized high prices prevented people from using the internet. For example, in 2008, the average check for 10 megabit per second in Moscow was $30 per month versus 120 dollars per month in Khabarovsk. A couple years later, these discrepancies were smaller and after more efforts, you see we have 500 megabit per second for $10 flat rate. And voice 
with 40 gigabit or 40 voice and 40 gigabit data for $14 per month. For comparison, Verizon files for 400 megabit is advertised as $59.99 and it adds famous telecom fees and it is not available everywhere. So in 2009, we launched a program targeting affordable internet for all. We started the discussion and launched key performance indicators on digital development, creating awareness and educational campaigns for the government and people, addressing advantages of the internet. For example, we organized an online conference for telecom minister Igor Shogolev. During 10 days, 4,200 users submitted 5,000 questions through the Mail.ru portal. Number one question was when the internet can be free or become more affordable. After the discussion, the government agreed to remove, to remove monopoly on access to telecom infrastructure. This enabled small internet providers to offer customers lower prices. It was a great exercise for government awareness and it's proved the concept. Free markets create new opportunities. But back to interview, while the government officials were evaluating all the questions in advance and getting prepared, they cherry-picked those that should work for the new minister's publicity. This is how the following internet mem was born. Internet user Yelena Golubeva asked Minister Shoglev how to counter Baratrum. Как законтрить Баратрума? Хм, контрить ты его зачем? Он отлично шлепается по пау пауками, responded Шоглев, revealing he is a gamer. Playing Dota. Of course, we worked on a few, quite a few series conferences and panel discussions, arranging the first Russian Internet Governance Forum. The purpose was to create an open and inclusive discussion with all stakeholders while educating all players about the nature of the internet and how crucial it is to maintain it open, secured and reliable. We did market research and analysis, we did community development and market education, we did a lot. For example, that's what we did for public and community awareness. We hired students and creative agencies to design viral videos and flash mobs. And I would love to show, to show this video very quick. And it's too bad you don't have sound, but it's beautiful Western music. I love these guys. It was fun. Woohoo! Bye bye. Okay, back to slides. Okay, we knew we have to educate media too. So we arranged some provoking discussions and round tables. For example, who managed internet and where is the red button? We did teasing outdoor advertising when we had only questions published and answers revealed weeks later.
we were influencing influencers from professional community to engage each group of stakeholders. We published internet governance book and we designed online game, studied the internet, gather on it. There were a lot of fun cases to follow with registrations. But let's address schools and youth. I believe it was a very important scenario, very important stepping stone for everyone. Because the youth really care about the country they will live in. So schools enrolled into a national wide competition, a championship, adopting new digital citizenship skills and learning how to internet works. We ran the regional youth forum in Yaroslavl and granted the domain name yaroslavl.rf. More than 500 students attended. They debated, debated such hot topics as safer internet, law in internet, who governs the internet, who owns it, and digital preservation. They asked tough questions and they challenged top experts while creating the civic society spirit and attitude. So you can see the results of those activities through the numbers. Russia is ranked number seven by internet users now. And 76 of population is actively using internet. The internet access and skills drive economic development for countries, people, and businesses. And in Russia specifically, digital divide turns into opportunity for growth for all stakeholders. So civic society developed when internet grows. You can see this growth using the slide. It was mostly in the provinces and rural areas because the connectivity issue was huge. Affordable internet increased usage and forced digital skills development. It created a lot of new jobs and unleashed user-generated content, sparkled new business models. You see the big jump in the middle, but it was accumulated one. So I'm happy to discuss this with anyone. It was fun. So it forced the interest to both domain names and diversified internet usage. More websites caused new domain names interest, but also opened people's mind to the new business models in digital. Between 2008 and 2011, dot ru doubled its size from two and a half to five millions so new web services were launched a new dot com generation of startups was born now they are mostly using dot io and ai domain names and quite a few of them are in silicon valley but we didn't say a word about what happened behind the scene during these three years so here's the timeline how it was done. We used the business approach, planning, phasing, have your registry and backend ready and well tested. Get your marketing at the place. We prioritized the government and trademark holders needs. Cyber squatting was a fundamental challenge and we had to study best practices and communicate with peers. Even before the string RF was delegated, we started the reservation process for Cyrillic trademarks first. Then trademarks made in both in Cyrillic and non-Cyrillic script, and then transliterated in media. We applied a lot of rules and including profanity filter, but hackers love typo and they got very creative about it. These corporate names and domain names are fictional and have been deliberately designed in English to reflect the peculiarity of these types of attempts. There was a stop list for words conflicting with public interests, principles of humanism and morality. We got about 5,000 obscenities in it. 
uh, the very first hour when we opened the registration for public, the entire Ozhegov dictionary was shot. Then all possible word combinations to follow. Our registrars were shooting word combinations as fast as possible, competing with each other. We took into account all stakeholders' feedback and diverse needs, but there was no way you can be Mr. Nice Guy to all. So there was some follow-up on that. This year we're celebrating 10th anniversary of .rf with 740,000 domain names. All of them are in usage and active. The last but not the least, let's talk about universal acceptance and technical standards implementation. How we can support inter internationalized identifiers and long TLDs. TLDs come and go on a daily basis now. Some applications are verifying the correctness of a TLD based on a static list, which is not the latest one, thus making wrong assumptions about the existence of a TLD. Using Unicode throughout applications and websites is the must. For example, I buy American phone and apps. However, I'm using the content on other languages. Please make sure you're, you're using up-to-date information about possible, TL, possible TLD formats. Some applications are still verifying that TLD entered by a user is from the list of earlier TLDs or has a maximum of three characters. When working with DNS, for regular web apps, a browser takes care of it. But today we have hackers in the room, so when you do a specialized app, you have to consider iDNA the protocol for handling IDNs. in applications. So emails has the same problem with non-ASCII email addresses. If I have a website on RF, I will have email on Cyrillic as well. Not all email servers servers support EAI. So a negotiation protocol is used to only send EAI when the target server supports it. Sender and receiver should support the signaling flag SMTP UTF-8. SMTP supports all the chain, but POP IMAP could have support EAI by providing a downgraded email version to the non-EAI conforming email software clients. Saying that we covered a lot and that's what I do now. Building technology hub for the Hudson Valley, addressing digital divide, helping people to gain digital literacy skills and become sustainable using technology. You can see Girls Who Code Club, you can see Coding Club, you can see the Hackathon and the HV Tech Fest. So we hope to see you around. Please join us. That's what I have for you today. And I will stop sharing. And I'm open for your questions. Thank you.